A very good afternoon to you. Uh, good evening. <laughs> Excuse me, I've lost my bearings for a moment. Let's begin with the substance of your findings in the report, Doctor. Well, we looked specifically at how there's already a, a slowdown in the coal economy because coal is our major uh, source of, of climate change impact in South Africa. And we need to be down, we use, need to be, at least by 2050, have zero coal use and zero other fossil fuels. It would be better to have it by 2040. So it's a, Is it possible? Absolutely. We, we, new renewables are already cheaper than, than new coal if you built, decided to, to build it today. And it's absolutely possible. It's, it's also, also much quicker to build them. But unfortunately, we, we, we stuck in a coal economy with all the problems with uh, Madupi and Kusile, which in about 2009 we, we warned and we argued that we would have exactly this situation if, if we uh, uh, proceeded to build them, which unfortunately happened. I'm quite interested in what goes into research such as the one that you conducted. What do you look at and what are the instruments of, me of measurement? Yes, well, um, it's very much qualitative research, so it takes place with, within the environmental justice movement. So it means we talk to communities that uh, coal-affected communities nationwide that we've been working with for some time. They identify the agendas and the issues and so on, so we follow up. Then uh, our method is once we've established uh, what those issues are on the ground, we then look, are they, um, the, are they part of the national debate? If not, why not? Are they sympathetic experts that are basically on the side of the communities and will, will make sure that those interests are carried into decision making? The other problem though, Dr. Munich, is that every once in a while we see another report that warns about the impact of climate change, that we're in a fast race against time to try and reduce the impact, yet there are people who still don't believe in the whole idea of climate change. Are you finding that you're seeing more people cross over to the other side and begin to hear your argument? It's really a very small minority of scientists who, who it's, it's a very, very small minority who, who don't believe in it. So it's more an effect of lobbyists who are trying to defend coal. So for example, the clean, clean coal lobby. So basically, it's, it's not a science fight, it's a, it's a political fight. And it's people who want to continue to, to, to profit from coal while we, we can't afford it anymore, and we can't afford it in environmental terms or in terms of human health. But so, what about ordinary people? Are they increasingly convinced of the arguments around the impact of climate change? Yes, I think so. I think so. I think it's climate change will bring very big changes very quickly in the next uh, 10, 20 years. We already see very, very different weather patterns and we see dramatic events like the floods in Mozambique and, and also in KZN. So, so I think uh, the climate change politics are, are changing at the moment and changing very quickly. If you look at the energy sector and the plans that are, that are, that are being made at the moment and, and the type of proposals, you see, you see a fundamental change. It's not a question of will coal be phased out, but how will it happen and, and how quickly will it happen? And the, the debate about the transition, the one that we focus on in, in this report, is what happens to the coal-affected communities, what happens to the coal mine workers, to the, the people who provide them with accommodation and food and so on. So take a region like uh, the, the Mpumalanga Highfelt. How do we create alternative economies? How do we understand what people are actually going through and what they need to, to survive and prosper after the end of coal? So it's absolutely necessary for a starting point of accepting that coal is coming to an end. So for example, using all the infrastructure for electricity available on the Pumalanga Highfelt, put in renewables, have a, looking at all the workers the, uh, and the experience and skills, put in a whole production chain that, that uh, produces uh, renewable energy, uh, solar panels, that produces uh, uh, the windmills that, that we can use. So, so let's not be caught unprepared mm. by this dramatic change.
I want to put to you another argument, Dr. Munich, around just this push for South Africa to cut down on emissions. Yes, it's important, as you say, scientifically for all nations to do this, but there are people who say it's actually, to a degree, almost pointless to have smaller nations cut down emissions when the bigger players in the more developed countries are not doing their bit, not bringing their, their bit to the table. We're not a very small player. We're number 13 in terms of em uh, carbon emissions in the world, so we're quite a big player. We're politically very influential because we, we have a very big economy and a carbon-intensive economy in Africa, and we have a lot of influence in the, in the African group dipl diplomatically. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very important how South Africans can handle climate change. Uh, and, and the transition. So they, they also, but, but, but we're relatively big. There are many nations that, have, that contribute one or two percent. Let me ask you then very quickly, we often hear different times given about how much time we have left to reverse the damage we've done. Is there a latest figure? Um, well, we, we don't have any time left. We are heading for, for two degrees Celsius uh, increase in, in temperature. And there are places that are already going down the tubes. You can look at mutton farming in the Karoo, for, for one example. Um, you can look at the various droughts in various towns that have no, no water in their dams. So it's actually already past midnight. But conventionally, people talk about 2040 or 2050 for all coal to be completely finished. Dr. Victor Munich from the Society Work and Development Institute at Wits University. Thank you so much. The doctor is part of the team that worked on this book that I'm showing you right now, Down to Zero, The Politics of Just Transition, another of the many books out currently on the impact of climate change.